Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about correcting the overcorrections in hyponatremia and we'll answer questions like if my sodium increased from 110 to 116 with the next lab, what should I do? Let's take an example in which your target sodium was to increase from 110 to 112 in next 4 hours but next sodium comes up to be 116. Now what should you do about it? Rapid correction is an emergency. So let's reiterate. Rapid correction is an emergency. Don't sit on it. First step would be to figure out if the readings are correct. You can erroneously have higher sodium if you accidentally draw a sample from IV receiving saline and therefore if there is a question about the accuracy check the sodium with stat ABG. It takes quite a bit of solute and water to change sodium by such a large degree. If the readings are real patients should have either lost quite a bit of free water almost always through urine so make sure that you check his urine output in the last four hours or the patient ate a lot of solute or a combination of both. Let's try to figure out how much free water you must lose for sodium to jump from 110 to 116. And using our previous calculations, we figure it out that you need around 2.2 liters to make this change. So your patient need to have at least made more than 2 liters of urine in 4 hours for the sodium to increase by such large degree. Even if your patient does not have folies, your bladder cannot really hold more than 600 cc acutely. However, in elderly, please make sure that you do a bladder scan to rule out any retention. For the solute part, you need around 504 milliosmoles to increase your sodium from 110 to 116, which is equivalent to 5.9 grams of sodium. So patient has to eat quite a bit of salt in 4 hours to increase his sodium from 110 to 116. You can go online and find out which food have highest amount of sodium in them. So let's assume that patient did not eat a lot of solute but he did started dumping urine. Question is why did this happen? This usually happens because his underlying etiology for hyponatremia has gotten better. So his ADS production has dropped that he has decreased echoporin channels and distal convoluted tubules which has resulted in less free water absorption. So more water is being lost in the urine, so his urine production has increased and his urine osmolality has decreased. This will present as patient making a lot of urine. You can certainly check your urine osmolality for academic purposes. It will be certainly much lower than before. Rapid correction is usually seen in patients with hypovolemic hyponatremia or patients in which the SIADH is temporary, for example, drug-related SIADH. And as the underlying pathologies gets corrected, ADH production decreases and the free water is lost in the urine and is not reabsorbed. So your urine output increase and your urine osmolality decreases. What should you do in these cases? Well, if you remember this diagram, the two things that you can do is stop free water loss in the urine and lower the sodium to get to your target sodium. So for that, you give DDAVP to stop free water loss and to lower sodium, you give him D5. And of course, you have stopped the solute intake. You can give 2 micrograms of DDAVP times 1. DDAVP would increase the echoporin channels and will result in absorption of free water, which will raise the urine osmolality and decrease the urine production. So some people call DDAVP as urinary clamp. Now, giving DDAVP alone will not raise your sodium. It will keep the sodium at 116. So, to bring it down to 112, you have to give free water. Let's see how much free water does this patient needs. Let's see how much 1 liter of D5 increases your sodium by. And doing the calculation, we figure out that in a 70 kilo person, 1 liter of D5 bolus will drop sodium by 3 milliequivalents. And here you can similarly work up equation for free water deficit. That comes out to be change in sodium multiplied by total body water divided by sodium minus change in sodium. So in our case, the amount of free water to drop sodium from 116 to 112 is 1.5 liters. 
the free water deficit calculation still underestimates the amount of free water needed to drop it from 116 to 112. If you want, you can refer to the literature cited below. So you have to give this patient 1.5 liter of D5 and you have to give it as a bolus over 30 minutes to bring back to the target level as soon as you can. Avoid giving D5 as a drip as it will take a long time for that sodium to recover. And once the bolus is complete, go ahead and recheck your sodium. DDVP lasts only a few hours. It has got half-life of 2 to 4 hours. So the rapid correction will start again once the effect of DDVP wears off. To make sure that you don't run into the same problem in the next couple of hours, schedule DDVP every 6 hours to clamp the urine and start him on 3% saline so that your sodium may slowly rise. And of course, you will put your patient on free water restriction while using DDAVP. Some people can also go for chasing the urine output and replace the part of urine output with D5. For example, if your patient is making 300 cc urine every hour, you can start him on D5 at rate of 200 cc per hour and monitor the sodiums. If his urine output drops next hours to say 150 cc, you drop your D5 replacement to 100 cc. So you are trying to chase your urine output every hour. Now this is certainly more labor intensive and you have to monitor the sodiums more closely. So in summary, rapid corrections are an emergency and are usually caused by correction of underlying disease process. The rapid corrections are heralded by increased urine output and lower urine osmolality. So make sure that you tell the nurse to call you if this happens. The two principles to correct the overcorrections are stopping free water loss in urine and therefore give DDAVB and to lower sodium to target sodium, give D5 as bolus. Once rapid correction occurs, expect it to continue once DDAVB wears off. So schedule DDAVB every 6 hours and give 3% to slowly raise the sodium. You can also change the urine output with D5 though it is more labor intensive. Thank you.